Hi everyone, welcome back to the Tiny Dogs podcast series, Pediatric Interview Edition, your source for the clinical thinking station of pediatric training interview in the UK, brought to you by the British Sudanese Association of Pediatric and Child Health, or BSAP CH in short. I'm your host, Isra Ibrahim, and joining us today, both of our presenters, Juwaria Ibrahim and Hanan Uleb, to present real-life demonstration case of clinical thinking station. So, without further ado, let's dive into our episode. Uh, eight years old, non-diabetic. Uh, presented to you in the AR with a history of uh, not taking the insulin in the school. Uh, and now uh, is, is the kibnik having high blood glucose and uh, mother take urine, they be stick at home and found there is ketone in the urine. Patient coming to you to the AR is a little bit drowsy. How you manage this child? Uh, so it looks I'm dealing with an uh, eight years old with uh, incompleted with medication and insulin. The patient came on um, with uh, decreased level of consciousness and he is in respiratory stress. Uh, so most likely, and my top uh, differential is that his patient maybe is uh, uh, in uh, DKA. So I will activate the emergency response system and uh, I will uh, inform my senior and I will delegate the roles to my team and uh, I will uh, push this patient to the resource room immediately. I will connect him to the cardiac monitor and the pulse oximeter and uh, I give him an uh, oxygen by uh, non-replacing 100% oxygen by non-replacing mask. mask. <coughs> Uh, then I will treat and I will approach this patient by an ABCD approach. Uh, first, I will start uh, by the airway. I have uh, to uh, make sure that there is an patent airway and I will continue to uh, monitor his SpO2. Uh, then I will move uh, to the breathing. Uh, this patient in respiratory distress, I will uh, examine him and assess his respiratory rate and his respiratory effort and uh, to also to listen to his test for air entry and uh, any added sound. Uh, then I will uh, go to the circulation. Regarding the circulation, I, uh, I will assess uh, for this patient. I have uh, to assess this patient on, um, uh, I mean, the level of dehydration. I have to assess his uh, ventral and peripheral pulses, his capillary refill time, uh, his color and his blood pressure. So, and I would like to take and uh, withdraw blood. I will insert an IV line and uh, I will take blood for um, uh, blood glucose and uh, for blood gas and uh, for electrolytes and osmolality and hemoglobin A1C. And uh, if there is any evidence of uh, fever or sepsis, I have uh, to consider to take uh, full blood count, uh, inflammatory markers, and uh, even blood culture. So it is according to the uh, blood gas. So according to the blood gas, I will assess this patient. He is in uh, severe uh, or uh, mild to moderate DKA according to the pH. If pH less than 7.1, so most likely this patient in uh, severe DKA, or uh, if uh, it is uh, more than 7.1, moderate uh, DKA. So according to his, uh, if I will assess this patient on shock or not, if this patient on shock, I have to expand his volume by a 20 ml uh, normal saline per kg. Um, then uh, I will consider start. Uh, I will ask one of my team uh, to bring the protocol of uh, DKA. Uh, meanwhile, I will assess his level of consciousness. I will be cautious uh, because the complication of DKA may be this patient in cerebral edema. I have to assess his level of consciousness, uh, his blood pressure. I make sure there is no pushing triad. I will see his pupil also, and uh, I will take his random uh, blood sugar. Um, then I will move to the E uh, if there is any fever or in rash. Then according to the severity of uh, DTA, I have to manage this patient. Uh, if this patient uh, in um, severe DTA, I have to uh, manage, uh, I will start by the fluid. I have to uh, calculate for him uh, the deficit uh, about 10% in severe DTA. 
uh, and uh, I have to uh, replace the deficit over 48 hours plus the maintenance. And um, after one to two hours, I have to start the insulin, uh, which it is uh, 0.05 to 0.1 ml uh, unit per kg. Uh, then I will assist this patient uh, hourly for uh, blood glucose, for uh, mental status, and uh, for input and output. Uh, then uh, two hourly, may I will start electrolyte and ketones after two hours, then four hourly. Uh, after a uh, stabilization, I have to update uh, the family about uh, the patient and I have to uh, take uh, history. I will ask about symptom and signs like abdominal pain. Uh, cosmal freezing, uh, weight loss, the polyuria, polydipsia, and I will ask also about the precipitating factor, if there is any fever, infection, and also I have to ask about his complaints with his medication, what is the type of insulin he is on, uh, is his complaint with his medication or not, and I will ask also about any significant past medical history, any uh, past medical history of uh, CB or DKA, any past medical history of uh, DICU admission. And uh, also I have uh, to ask about any other medication may I consider that those may uh, associate with other ingestion like aspirin. Uh, then I have to ask about his last meal and uh, about the event. Then I will examine this patient from head to toe, and I will be a uh, coach in uh, to examine his abdomen. And uh, then uh, if this patient in uh, severe DKA, I have to admit this patient uh, for uh, PICU, or if there is any sign of cerebral edema, uh, like uh, um, altered level of uh, mental status, uh, tachycardia, bradycardia, and uh, still cosmal breathing, I have uh, to consider uh, cerebral edema. So I will uh, inform the PIC immediately and I will consider my percent uh, align or manitol. Uh, so um, I will monitor this patient closely and observe him and uh, uh, then I will observe the, his random blood sugar hourly. Uh, if his random blood sugar it is fall to uh, 14 uh, milligram per deciliter, I have to change his fluid to uh, 5% plus uh, 0.9, so 5% of stroke plus nine. And I will continue to monitor if uh, it's still uh, falling below 6, I have to uh, add more uh, glucose to be 10%. Um, um, then I will admit this patient to the PICU uh, for further management. Uh, after uh, referring the patient to the PICU, we have to do a um, debriefing session to our team to assess our performance. And uh, okay, thank you. At the end of today's episode, me and Bisab CH would like to extend our thanks to our presenter, Jueria Ibrahim and Hanan Aleb, for sharing their thoughts with us. We, ha we hope that this episode has provided some sort of guidance for the clinical thinking stations. Remember, our journey does not end here. Be sure to check out the rest of our media outlet, our YouTube channel, our website, and our the rest of our web podcast. Remember also, your feedback is valuable. Please reach out and share your thoughts, questions, or suggestions. Together, we can improve and provide content that meets your need. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, next time, stay curious and keep learning.